Topic tonight is um, we just gonna be talking about people's thoughts of today's inauguration and Joe and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So that's what we gonna be talking about tonight. The inauguration, you know, a little bit of politics, you know, and how do black people feel about the inauguration, you know? Is this something that's going to be beneficial? Is things going to change? Is it, is it going to get better? You know, what's up with it, family? What's up with it, family? Yeah, so make sure you guys um, get a chance to hit up the cash app, all right, to support uh, educational content, black educational content. This is Omnivision EDU, Scientific and Historical Literacy for Indigenous Peoples, all right? Historical and Scientific Literacy for Indigenous People. Tonight, we're going to be having a bill. This is We this is we Woke Wednesdays, all right? We have this every Wednesday is a segment and where we come together and we build. So, there's a lot going on on the internet right now. In regards to the inauguration and people in their feelings about, you know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. But, you know, we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about it. So, how many people are familiar with colonialism? Astro Ra, the second. Peace and blessings, King, love and light. Now she. How many people are familiar with colonialism? All right? Colonialism, capitalism, sectarianism, imperialism. These are, these are the things that we're dealing with when it comes to voting, when it comes to politics. Now, like I said, Earlier today, I made a post about how colonialism is not over until the native indigenous people are returned their land and their resources. Until the colonists return the land and the resources, you're not voting, you know, for to for for a better world or a better society because it's already been, uh, uh, you know. Uh, a colonial act of theft, okay, and exploitation of 
a group of people to benefit another group of people. So even when you look in politics, okay, um, you never see too many people of color in a political, you know, arena at one time. You mostly see people of European descent, okay, but you don't see too many people of color family, and that's for a reason. Now we, 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 we had what forty six president. And Joe Biden is the 46th president. So far, there's only been one black president, one brother of African descent, okay? Out of all that time, out of all those terms, and elections and voting and all of that good stuff. One brother, okay? So there's just certain things to think about, certain basic things, family. So look, a few facts from the criminal justice fact sheet. From the NAACP.org family. Okay? A few fun facts. We're going to go over a few facts. Just give me one second. I'm trying to give people time to get in the building. Love and light. For everybody that's rocking with me. Got to stay hydrated. So look, a few facts, family, from the NAACP.org, all right? Now, the criminal justice system is heavily impacted by the bias of police mentality, all right, as well as outdated judicial precedents, all right? It is largely driven by racial disparities, which directly obstruct and disconstruct our minority communities, or the black community, all right? Now, the origins of modern-day police mentality can be traced, family, to the slave patrol, all right? The earliest formal slave patrol was created in the Carolinas, all right? During the, um, the, the 13 colonies before um, Carolina, North Carolina and North South Carolina was separated, was called the Carolinas, okay? Um, so in the early 1700s, with the following mission to establish a system of terror in response to slave uprisings with the capacity to pursue, apprehend, and return runaway slaves, family, to their owners, including the use of excessive force to control and produce the desired slave behavior, all right? Now, this is NAACP.org. It's just a few facts from the website. Now, slave patrols allow forcible entry into any home solely based on suspicious suspicions of protecting runaway slaves all right just like it is in real life nigga running in the crib you know what i'm saying you might not even know you know what's going on what's going down and it might be a whole situation but if you in the area was a, a crime populated area you know it's it's really no it's really no holes bar family it's no rules they pulling up, they doing whatever. They coming in the house if they think something going on, family. So it's the same thing even in today's modern times. So the slave patrol was something that started during the slave times, family, okay? And I say that because it's relevant to the fact that we got a new president and we voting and we doing what we can to participate in this dream called the United States of America. And we want to be united and and live as a nation but it's not feeling united when we had slavery when we had um anti-literacy laws against blacks when when blacks were not allowed to vote okay it was not feeling united family okay so just keep that in mind now kamala harris a lot of black people seem to be excited about kamala harris okay and feeling like she's going to make some type of contribution all right. Now, what we know about it is that Kamala Harris is a former prosecutor. All right. She has had a long 20 plus, uh, 30 plus career as a prosecutor. All right. Prosecutor's job is to get high conviction rates. All right. And to bring individuals before the court and convict those individuals and get. Um, pretty much um, contracts because 
That's what it is. People who go to jail are contracts. You go to jail, you, you get you get shelter, you get housing, you get fed. You know, there's a whole arrangement as to how that's provided. Peace and blessings to, to my queen, love and light. I see you. Thank you for the support, queen. Peace. All right. So we in here. So we we talking about it. We're going to build about a family. So people who go to jail, the whole jail industry is about getting contracts. All right. They're not looking at people like people. They're looking at people like money, like contracts. All right. So it's the same thing. They're trying to get that contract family. All right. And when you're educated, all right, when you're liberated, when you understand who you are as a black indigenous uh, person or somebody of African descent and understand that your people are great and that you are great and that there's no limitation as to what you can do or achieve, then you'll begin to move real right, family. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, you just got to, you know, we, we can't let them give us an identity or let them miseducate us family it's up to us to do the research and to, and to uh, have a filtering system so that's what the bill is about like i said what is what are your thoughts on joe biden's inauguration is it is it positive is it negative what's good with your family all right i don't think it's going to change nothing though. it's just my personal opinion but we'll see Um, so, we know that uh, Joe Biden, Mr. Joe Biden, he came up, um, okay, with some type of, some type of, uh, what was that, what was that law that Biden came up with? One second for me. If y'all, if you know it, you can drop it in the comments. Yeah, the war on crime, some type of, yeah, the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994, commonly referred to as the 1994 Crime Bill, all right, Mr. Joe Biden, and he had a big part to play with that, so let's just read into that, the Clinton Crime Bill, or the Biden Crime Law, all right, also known as the Biden Crime Law, is an act of Congress dealing with the crime and law enforcement, it became law in 1994, family. All right, peace and blessings. Uh, thickness Hinton in the building. I see you love and light. Appreciate you for stopping by. Um, we just building about um, thoughts on Biden's inauguration. And is this something that's going to benefit our people of African descent? You know, we've done a lot of voting over the years. We've done a lot of things to try to be a part of this nation and to help build the nation. But it don't it don't seem like we're benefiting the same as other individuals. Okay? So just something to think about, family. Alright, so Mr. Biden, he's a part of this crime this uh crime bill. Alright? So it's an act of Congress dealing with the crime and law enforcement. It became law in nineteen ninety four. It is the largest crime bill in the history of the United States. And consisted of 356 pages, all right, that provided 100,000 new police officers, all right, 9.7 billion in funding, all right, for prisons and 6.1 billion in funding for prevention programs, where which were designed for significant input in the experience in the experienced police officers, all right. So they hired a bunch of police officers in 1994 to try to um, take niggas off the street pretty much you feel me if you was if you was hustling if you was if you was robbing if you was prostituting anything illegal selling food stamps whatever they was coming to get you family all right so this crime bill was put out in 1994 and Joe Biden had a, a big role to play in that so you know just just something to to look into family all right now let me see. Yeah, so the crime bill was put out by Joe Biden. Now, by New York Times, it's described as a page from the Republican playbook. Clinton said on July 23rd, 1992, family. All right, who was also a part of 
the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, also referred to as the 1994 Crime Bill. He said that we cannot take our country back until we take our neighborhoods back. All right. Four years ago, this crime issue was used to divide America. I want to use it to unite America. I want to be tough on crime and good for civil rights. You can't have civil rights without order and safety. All right. So that was a quote by Bill Clinton in the New York Times Magazine, um, July 23, 1992. Okay. So just like Donald Trump said when he was in office, he said something about uh, making America great again. And when you think about that comment, that statement, you know, when was America great for black in descent, considering that in the past we were slaves, okay? So we didn't have the same rights. We had to fight for civil rights. So we had Martin Luther King and um, uh, uh, Brother Malcolm X and, you know, uh, Clarence 13X, different brothers that came, came along and tried to, um, you know, be revolutionaries and make an impact in, you know, in, in black consciousness and liberation for black people, okay? And all of, those in, all of those individuals had a similar legacy family, okay? They had a similar legacy. So colonialism is nothing to play with, okay? It's something that's very real, something that's, that's happening in modern times, and it's something that we got to think about. And we got to try to figure it out because we don't want to subjugate these babies to, you know, years of colonialism, family. Every generation that go by that we don't figure it out, the next generation got to got to deal with that. So look. Let me see. So I'm going to go over a few quotes by Mr. Joe Biden, all right? He said, we must take back the streets, all right? Quote by Mr. Joe Biden. He said, it doesn't matter whether the person is costing you, your son or daughter, my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents. It doesn't matter or not if they were deprived as a youth, all right? Listen to the words. This is, this is Joe Biden's words. It doesn't matter if they had a background to enable them to be socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter or not, rather they were victims of society. Okay? The end result is that they are about to knock my mother over the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, take out my wife or son, so I do not want to know, I do not want to understand, they must be taken down, they must be taken off the street family. All right, so just to let you see from the mind of Joe Biden, from the, the words that Joe Biden spoke, you know what I'm saying? And this man is your president at the inauguration today, all right? January 20th, 2021, family, all right? So everybody that got happy about the inauguration today, think about colonialism. It's a colonialism justice is colonialism um is it is it fair is it something that you want to promote to to your kids or is it something that you want to co-sign family to me it's not something that you want to co-sign because it's theft all right it's organized structured theft all right and like i said until they get the indigenous native people their land and their resources we're still going to be dealing with colonialism. Now, we know that Kamala Harris, like I said, she, she was a uh, prosecutor, a DA. She put a lot of brothers in jail, okay? A lot of people in jail, family. Um, and ironically, with blacks supposed to be accounting for 13% of the population, I think it said, um, according to the NCAAP.org, that blacks account for 22% of the incarcerations um, in America, if I'm not mistaken. Peace and blessings, love and light to the family. Read 
Janishi Kalum, if I'm not if I if I not if I pronounce that correctly. Love and light, peace and blessing. Alright. Thank y'all for tuning in, for rocking with me. This is Omnivision EDU. I am your host. This is Scientific and Historical Literacy. We're just going over the thoughts of Biden's inauguration for today. All right? There's been a lot of talk, a lot of buzz about it. Everybody got something to say about it. Let's talk about it. We here, family. All right? I'm giving y'all some of my time to build about this. All right? Um, make sure you get over to the YouTube, um, www.youtube.com slash the nature guide, Omni Amanashi, that's T-H-E-N-A-T-U-R-E-G-O-D, space, Omni Amanashi, O-M-N-I-A-M-U-N-A-S-E, alright, so make sure you get over there to the tube, I got like 66 videos, alright, um, got a lot of information about DNA, gen genetics, all right, talking about science, a little bit of history, you feel me, so, that's how we racking out, um, but like I said, we talking about this inauguration, voting, should black people vote, why do you vote? You, do you vote because you feel like it's the thing to do? Um, you feel like voting voting changes things or, you know, voting is just a culture? Or, you know, what is it to it? What, what's good with voting? Like, what's, what's voting for me? Like, you got this inauguration. What about the fact that Kanye was one of the um, the, the runners-up? Like, we, we I would have I voted for Kanye, but Kanye didn't even make it. You feel me? It's like... Even though we didn't rock with Trump, we still didn't necessarily want Biden and Kamala Harris. You feel me? Even though we didn't rock with Trump, don't mean that we wanted those other individuals. It's still some type of filtration or censoring that they're doing, putting certain people in their family. Anybody just can't be the president. You know what I'm saying? But. Let me see, uh, one second, family. Let me go on my notes. If you see me looking to the side, I got notes over here just trying to keep track of the bill. So, like I said, Kamala Harris is a prosecutor. Prosecutor is the guy with the battle axe, with the cloth mask. And it's the last person you're going to see, all right, because it's the person that's going to prosecute you, that's going to send you to glory. Kamala Harris is a prosecutor. It's like they had in the medieval times in the 1600s, all right? Kamala Harris' job is to prosecute niggas, all right? And she did that very well since 1990, all right? Received many awards for her... Um, for her allegiance, all right? Now, in the United States federal court system, the conviction rate rose from approximately 75% to approximately 85% between 1972 and 1992. For 2012, the U.S. Department of Justice reported 93% conviction rates in 2000. The conviction rate was also high in the U.S. state courts, all right? So you see that Conviction rates have been high in the U.S., all right? A lot of incarcerations, all right? I wonder if the Joe Biden crime bill of 1994 had something to do with that, with him and Bill Clinton. So the prosecutor, job is to prosecute. That's what Kamala Harris is. Now, prosecute comes from Latin, prosecutus, meaning to follow after, all right? Now, the act of of processing or holding a trial against a person who is accused of a crime to see if that person is guilty. The side of a legal case which argues that a person who is accused of a crime is guilty. The lawyer or lawyers who prosecute someone in the court case is a prosecutor, right? That's the definition from Merriam-Webster's dictionary, 
All right. Um, like I said, Kamala Harris is also in an interracial relationship family. So, you know, she if she's pro-black, because you most definitely you want a representative that's going to be there for the interests of black people. So you, it's in your best interest to select someone who's pro-black. But Kamala Harris, I don't believe she's pro-black. She looks like she's kind of black, but she might not even be fully black. Um, but anyway, um, I don't know if, um, you know, selecting Kamala Harris is, uh, you know, the best decision or the best, the best choice. All right? But we'll see. Like I said, Keita Jones, love and light, peace and blessings. I she. That's the family. Thank you for stopping by for rocking with me. All right. We're just trying to see what the Omnivision family is. All right. Now, like I said, she's in an interracial, interracial relationship. You know, my thoughts on that is Kamala Harris being in an interracial, interracial relationship shows that she has no sense of self pride or self identity all right because every individual whether you're african american uh, european asian okay you are the product of a kind of a genetic group it's two individuals that came together a black man and a black woman made you if you're a black man or a black woman so you need to have a sense of um self identity you need to have a sense of um, self-love and self-pride. So I don't necessarily have black people doing, um, doing the inter inter interracial relationships because it's, it's confusion. You know, I, you know, grapes are grapes, apples are apples, oranges are oranges, bananas are bananas. And I don't believe the creator makes mistakes. So... You know, I know people like to do what they want to do, but, um, you know, there's a such thing as, as structure and order, okay? So, I'm not for that, all right? Um, so, colonialism, family, is a practice of domination which involves the subjugation of one people to another, all right? One of the difficulties in defining colonialism is that it is hard to distinguish from imperialism, all right? Like colonialism, imperialism also involves political and economic control over dependent territory, okay? That's the definition from Stanford University, May 9, 2006. Capitalism is an economic system characterized by private or corporate ownership of capital goods by investments that are determined by private decision and by prices, productions, and the distribution of goods that are determined mainly by competition and free market. Okay, so capitalism is a system that's meant to take and extract, all right, and it doesn't give back. That's, that's kind of what, you know, we deal with, with government. Government is, is structured to benefit itself more than the people. But it's supposed to be for the people, but it's not. That's not how it's looking. But anyway, imperialism is a policy or ideology of extending the rule of peoples and other countries for extending political and economic access, power, and control through employing hard power, especially military force. Okay, but also soft soft power. That definition is from uh, Wikipedia. So imperialism is also similar to those concepts capitalism colonialism all right and you seen it mentioned military force all right when black people um first were uh invaded okay by the ptolemies the greek ptolemies they were invaded by these individuals from a, a foreign nation all right by military force which they came to impose their political policies and way of life, okay? And so we see that even back then, you know, um, it's nothing new that nations have been uh, invaded and forced to live outside of the norm, outside of and, 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 um, the cultural norms and heritage. And so anyway, 
that's how I feel about Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Like we're living outside of our of being an African, all right? Because we're African Americans, family. We're people that have the sort of genetic group that's similar to Africans, all right? And we're living in America, and we're supposed to be in the in the, in the United States, united with other nations, living as one nation, okay? But it doesn't seem like black people are getting the same privileges, um, and the same um, the same love, family. So something to think about. Sectarianism is a form of prejudice, discrimination, or hatred arising from attaching relations of inferiority and superiority to differences between subdivisions within a group. Common examples of denominations of a religion, ethnic, identity, class, or region for citizens of a state and fractions of a political movement. So sectarianism means Prejudice, all right, discrimination, hatred for other groups, inferiority, superiority. And it just so happens that in the genetic study of the ABO blood group system, I, you know, I deal with a little bit of biology, a little, little bit of chemistry and all of that, and the makeup of, of the human body. And I see that in certain genetic groups, you know, they are um, inferior in immunity, okay, inferior and, and certain, um, as far as like having um, the same amount of um, base pairs, okay, the DNA is not as complex, all right? So there is a difference in genetic grouping and um, structure and functionality. So I would say that sectarianism is not necessarily the thing to do or the, or the way to go, but According to science, there is genetic inferiority and genetic superiority. That's not being racist. That's, that's actually uh, a fact. So, anyway, politics normally conflict with science, but science is still science. Whether you put policies in play to disregard it, it's still going to be what it is. So, anyway, um, science is not racism, family. All right? And the melanated gene is a gene absent of mutation, which they call Rh negative, all right? This is the native indigenous population. So I know most black people may not be aware of that, but if you want to know more about that, hit up my YouTube. I have plenty of videos talking about blood types and genetics and all of that. So this is the reason why I'm speaking to you, all right? Because it's my job to study my job to try to get this information to out to the people and, and build with you, all right? So instead of just typing, family, because I don't have time to sit on the Internet doing too much typing, all right? That's why I'm going live. I give, I give, um, give people a chance to be able to come in and, and build and see what they got to see through the live, all right? So, uh, let me see. So, one of the things that I think is is uh, is crazy too, family. Like the Middle East, right? What y'all think about the Middle East always dealing with war? The Middle East always dealing with terrorism. Stuff always going on over there. Iraq, Su Sudan. Um, Arabia, all right? These are African countries, family. Africa is a continent consisting of 54 countries, all right? It's the largest uh, continental landmass on the planet, all right? Um, it produces the most resources as well. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that's the reason why there's always something going on over there in Africa. They got they depicting the, the kids as, you know, impoverished and they ain't got nothing. They poor, this, that, and the third. But actually, that's the most resourceful land in, in the, on the whole planet. It produces the most resources, family. So, I don't know. That's something to think about. The Middle East is just referring to um, a certain region of land that's still on the same continent, you know. 
but it's still it's still the same land, family. It's not really separated. That's my point. The Middle East is not separate from Africa. So, I don't know how long I've been on, but, um, I don't know, I guess I just, um, I just, um, go ahead and, and, and end the joint, alright, I thank y'all for coming in the bill, um, for whoever, you know, who uh, is interested in politics, information, you know, like I said, just had a few thoughts on Biden's inauguration and why I think that, um, you know, voting is not really going to change anything for black people. Like, there's no such thing as a native indigenous person anymore. You know what I'm saying? There's no such thing as that. They just got everybody blended in, mixed in, but it's pretty much like, you know, contamination family like it's confusion like there's an indigenous nation there's a non-indigenous nation but right now we got it to where politically you know in politics they don't even they don't even um they don't even consider or acknowledge people that are native and and of uh, indigenous descent family so that's you know every anybody's supposed to have equal rights but then we seen you know with the anti-literacy laws and you know, people, black people not being able to vote, slavery, we see that it wasn't united family. So think about this united thing. I just think it's a way to disguise invasion, a way to disguise colonialism family. We're not united, okay? We're living together, all right, to be exploited. And that's what we see happening. So just keep your eyes and your ears open for Mr. Biden and Mrs. Uh, Kamala Harris, because I don't trust him as far as I can see him, family, all right? So anyway, love and light to everybody. Uh, Omnivision EDU um, presents another segment. We'll be getting back to you on another joint um, Sunday. I may go live again before that. If so, I'll be letting you guys know. So feel free to hit up the timeline. Like I said, um, if you want to contact me, you can hit me www.omnisnatura360 um, at gmail.com. N A T U R A 360 at gmail.com. All right. Love and light. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Like I said, thank y'all for tuning in with me. I'll hit y'all on the next video. One.